If you are looking for a budget gun that can shoot the best ammo and drop just about any enemy and escape from Tarkov, then this video is for you. In this episode of Cheap Chad Destroyers, we are looking at a really affordable gun that almost nobody uses that can bring down any enemy. I'm Jesse Kazam. Welcome back to another Escape from Tarkov video. If you like this video, think about dropping a like, commenting down below, or subscribing to the channel. All that stuff helps me out a ton. And I stream Escape from Tarkov on Twitch. All my links will be down below. I'd love to have you stop by and say hey. With all that out of the way, though, let's go ahead and dive right in. So in this video, we are talking about the RFB. Now, you don't see a lot of people using these. To be honest with you, I don't really like using this gun. But when you really look at it on paper, it's hard to not talk about it when you're talking about a budget gun, especially a budget gun that has the ability to drop any enemy. It has that ability because it's chambered in 7.62 by 51, which is kind of one of the most meta rounds because it's a big boy round. It's got a lot of pen and a lot of damage. So that's your M62, M61, M80, 993. That's that round. So we'll get to the ammo and why this is kind of such a killer later on. But we'll start with just the price. So it was added not too long ago, and they are about... Uh, 30,000 rubles on the flea market, which is very affordable, especially since, well, you don't need to mod these out very much. Um, and it's a little bit cheaper than purchasing it from the trader. You can get it for about 60K. When you, when you factor in 478 USD, it's about 60K rubles, level two peacekeeper. So you can get these relatively early on, which is nice. Um, but definitely getting it on the flea market is going to be more affordable. Uh, now, these things are a lot, I mean, they are a bullpup, so the magazine sits in the back, and what makes, we just did a video on the MDR, and what makes bullpups so nice, especially in Tarkov, is because you don't need to do a whole lot to them to mod them out. Once again, you know, gas tube, upper receiver, buttstock, pistol grip, uh, you know, buffer tube, any of that stuff. Now, that comes at a cost always, right? So, you're not going to be able to get the stats of this gun really, really low, but it's cheap. It shoots a big boy round. You don't need to do, uh, there isn't a lot of additional cost outside of purchasing the gun, and then boom, you're just about ready to go. Stats matter even less. It doesn't mean they don't matter, but it matters even less on a semi-automatic gun because you're just shooting one shot at a time. You're only really spam clicking if you're close, which once again, isn't gonna make a whole much of a difference here. Uh, so they're not very modular, uh, which is a once again, kind of like a pro and a con. It keeps costs down to run this thing, but uh, it is missing a few things. So we can obviously put a like a foregrip on it. Um, if you wanna suppress it, you just buy a really cheap thread adapter and now what makes one of this great is that any suppressor that fits on any of the other 308 or 762 by 51 guns will fit right on. I just had this blackout right here. It takes, uh, it's got a few of its own mags, like 10 round mags, but it also takes the foul mags. So you can put up to a 30 round mag in it. You can throw an optic on it and then you're good to go. Uh, this cannot take tactile devices. And I don't know if this is something that they're going to change eventually or not, but you can't put a flashlight or a laser on this thing. There is no rail other than the rail for the foregrip and the rail for your optic. You can put irons on it if you want and boom. Uh, the, these attachments I have bring it down to 119 vertical recoil. Once again, we're not talking about good stats here, but this is a semi-automatic only weapon. So you're only going to be tapping with this and kind of like panic tapping when you get close. So the stats don't matter as much. But because of that, because it's not a full auto gun where the you know vertical recoil really, really matters. And because it's a bullpup and the whole, you know, the whole reason for buying it is budget, then you really don't need to be spending money on meta attachments. Like this SDN suppressor is really expensive. I wouldn't be using this unless I had it in my stash already. I would be buying a much cheaper suppressor. But that's really it. That's all that's to like this gun and how you can mod it out. You throw your optic of choice on it and you throw your foregrip and a suppressor if you want it or, a, you know, a different compensator if you have one and boom. Another thing I'm not too fond of with this weapon is that the rail system where the optic is sits pretty far forward. So sometimes with your red dots, they can feel a little farther away. And sometimes depending on the optic that you use, it can also mean that you can get a little bit of eye relief or an optic just appears different than on another gun. We get a little bit of eye relief there. It's not too bad. It sits pretty far forward. You're, you know, what you're looking through is kind of smaller than on some other guns. Test out some optics though, because some don't seem to be as bad. Like I'm a huge fan of the Voodoo and on this, uh, the Voodoo doesn't seem to be that bad. You get a pretty big sight picture. You get a little bit of eye relief. 
um, especially once you've zoomed in like you get up it's pretty bad once you zoomed in when you zoomed out it's not that bad uh, but that's kind of part of and eye relief is the black circles that go around the sides when you're zooming in so that's another thing that I don't quite like about the gun but Remember, we're talking about a gun that's only 20, 30 thousand rubles off the flea market that doesn't require a whole lot of additional cost and shoots one of the best value, one of the best rounds in the game. Of course, there's going to be some trade offs. And I think that's a good thing. I think this thing sits in a place where it's not meta. It doesn't need to be meta. But if you're on a budget, but you want something that you're not really worried that you're going to, you know, just run up on somebody with an Alton and not be able to do anything to them. Uh, it kind of affords you the ability to spend the extra money on the ammo if you want. So like we said, this shoots uh, 7.62 by 51. This is basically an M61 slingshot. M61 is expensive, but it's an amazing round. And it, at the end of the day, it's really just a cheap way. You can cheap out on the gun so you can get the best ammo. M61 is 64 pen and 70 damage, high pen and high damage. It's 11 USD around from Peacekeeper. Uh, which is really expensive and you have to get all the way up to uh, level four on peacekeeper you can only buy 80 at a time it's an expensive round it's even more expensive on the flea market it is craftable though which is nice for six red gunpowders and two helixes at the uh in the hideout you can actually craft quite a bit of it i think it's like 300 or something like that which is really nice um that's a pretty doable craft especially since yeah you can craft 300 m61 especially since you can craft blue gunpowder you can craft green gunpowder you can use those gunpowder and matches to craft red gunpowder and then just keep doing that till you have six red gunpowder and then buy two helixes off the flea market and that seems to be a very affordable way to get a decent amount of m61 M61 isn't the only round it shoots, obviously. M62 got a nerf. It's 44 pen and 79 damage, and that is 6 USD from Peacekeeper. Uh, Peacekeeper 3, it's not a terrible round. It's Tracer, which I like to use this a lot, especially early game when I'm sniping, because earlier in the wipe, you don't need as much pen, and this helps you kind of dial in your sniper if you're going for those long shots. M80 is even cheaper. Uh, you can purchase this for $3 around, and you can buy this as 41 pen and 80 damage. So the the delta between M62 and M80 is a lot shorter. These are almost identical rounds now, but M80 is cheaper. So uh, it, it shoots big boy rounds. I mean, even M80, even something with 41 pen and 80 damage, like even mid or late wipe, that's not a terrible round. It's just that it also has the ability to shoot some of the best rounds in the game. So it's a simple gun, right? It's cheap. You don't really need to do a whole lot to it. It's definitely not worth spending money on really high tier attachments on it. You throw an optic or something that you've got in your stash on it. You get some mags and boom, you can even rock like 10 round mags in this so that you can use M61, keep most of it in your secure container, only have like maybe one additional 10 round mag. So you've only got 20 rounds out at a time. That's a good way to do it. But this is the M61 slingshot. And something else I want to do really quick, if we search all of the different weapons that can shoot this, you can kind of see why this fits as a really good weapon in Escape from Tarkov. All the guns that shoot this ammo, you've got your full auto weapons, which is your 308 MDR and the SA-58. These are really expensive. These uh, take a lot more mods. There is an MDR, which doesn't, you know what I mean? MDRs are nice. You don't need a whole lot of mods, but even this starts at 100K. You've got bolt actions, which I love sniping in this game, but when you can have something that shoots semi-auto that you can just tap, 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 and you can still put those sniper scopes on it. If you're looking for best bang for buck, these probably aren't it. And then you've got your uh, marksman rifles, the SR-25, the RSAS, and the M1A. These are really fun. These are really cool. They're really fun to mod out. These are really fun to use, but they're more expensive, require more mods, and at the end of the day are just semi-auto as well. So then we go back to the assault carbines. You've got this and the Vepper Hunter. The Vepper Hunter is a great gun. It's really cheap, but its clear disadvantages are uh, it's even less modular. You can't put four grips on it. It's uh, maxed at a 10 round mag. If you want to suppress it, there's one suppressor that you need to use as opposed to any of the suppressors that can use a 308 uh, gun can go on the RFB. 
and you're not necessarily limited to the optics that you can put on it. But for me personally, putting the like mount adapters and then putting optics on that, they can end up sitting really, really high. And I really don't like using those. Um, I'm not saying the Viper Hunter is a bad gun, but for the price, which is very similar when you stack it up against something that can be a little bit more modular, higher capacity mags, suppresses a lot easier. The RFB seems like a pretty clear choice. So I hope this helped. Uh, I hope this gave you guys maybe some new perspective on this gun. You really don't see them a lot and they are really devastating, really affordable guns. So hopefully you guys maybe try this out, go out in your raids and drop some thick boys with really little investment in Escape from Tarkov. Thank you so much, as always, for taking the time to check out this video. If you like the video, think about dropping a like, commenting down below, or subscribing to the channel. I stream Escape from Tarkov on Twitch. All my links will be down below. And if you're looking for people to play Tarkov with, our Discord is an awesome place to be. That link is down below as well. Thank you again for stopping by, and I will definitely see you all on the next one.